Welcome, my name is Brad Landahl. I'm going to try to introduce motivational interviewing to you in five minutes. So hang tight and let's do a survey of what MI is and what it tries to accomplish. So what is MI? Well, it's many things. It's a set of ideas or philosophies about change, a set of philosophies and ideas about what counselors should and should not do. It's also a set of techniques or tools that clinicians can use to help people move forward. When I say clinicians, by the way, I mean doctors, nurses, psychologists, counselors, social workers, educators, probation officers, anyone who's trying to help someone move forward. MI has some ideas for you on how to help your people take healthy steps. All right, what problems does MI solve? There are many. I'll introduce about six to you, so hang tight. Uh, why should you care? Well, counseling is difficult. Counseling other people's change is a little bit like a puzzle, and so MI provides a roadmap, <laughs> roadmap, a roadmap or tools to help you know how to help others better. Okay, so what are some of the problems that MI in fact solves? One is where to focus in counseling. I believe that counseling is often a problem of, of abundance. There are so many areas you could pursue. Where should you prioritize your time? MI says, first of all, getting to agreed upon goals, having skills to understand and lift clients' motivations, understanding clients' confidence and providing ideas about how to lift confidence, helping clients develop credible plans, promoting client engagement, and reducing client resistance. So that's one of the key problems that MI solves. It has ideas and strategies on how to do all of these different activities. And I'll give you a quick overview now. Let's look at the second problem MI solves. It's actually one of the key ideas of MI. So MI has strategies and philosophies about how to lift clients' motivation, to strengthen their intrinsic motivation. So imagine this. A client says the following. I want to slow down on drinking and start exercising more. However, I'm not sure I can. I'm really stressed and I've not kept to my plan before. If I can change, then I think I will feel better. All right, what do we do here? Notice, MI training begins to change how we decode or look at clients' language. We could almost say it's like the Rosetta Stone to decoding client language. So the MI trainer will now be able to see, hey, look at that. That's some change talk. That's, that green talk is change talk. We want to do three things with that. We want to see it, we want to extend it, and we want to evoke change talk. Now, that red language, not that it's bad, but if we focus too much on this sustained talk or quote-unquote resistance talk, what might happen is the client becomes more and more entrenched in not changing. And again, notice there's some more green talk. So one of the things MI does is help us understand and lift clients' motivation through techniques that we just showed you there. Okay. Another problem that MI solves is how to lift clients' confidence. We don't have time to talk about that today, so just know that it does that. It also helps reduce frustration with clients because it has a philosophy about change and what we should do more of and less of, so that's good for us. All right, let's look at another problem that MI solves. Uh, first of all, all of MI is about increasing client engagement in the process and at the same time, preventing or reducing clients' resistance. Notice we put resistance in quotes because it's a pretty loaded term, but MI is all about, like I say, lifting client engagement and lowering their resistance. Okay, MI is an evidence-based approach. That's pretty exciting. So as far as published articles go, there are many, 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 many published articles. So check this out. In uh, October of 2019, there were just shy of 4,000 articles that have been published on MI, and that's just coming from one database. So there is loads of evidence in support of MI. All right, let's take a look at what our program does. So first of all, we review the major processes of motivational interviewing, getting to focus or agreed upon goals, lifting clients' motivation, and lifting confidence through developing credible plans. We also show skills for lowering clients' resistance, promoting engagement, and there are many, many skills in each of these areas. Uh, as an example, when we go to the city of focusing, there's the miracle question, prioritizing among goals, flipping concerns to goals, and other specific skills we can look at to promote focus. In terms of motivation, lifting clients' motivation, again, many skills. Here are three simple ones, recognizing change talk, extending change talk, evoking change talk, 
and many skills on each of these different uh, kind of areas. We we'll talk about how to plan. Again, several specific skills that are going to help you understand how to lift clients' confidence. And we have modules for each of these. So that is our program. What does our program actually look like? So we have roughly 33 different modules. For example, possessiveness and its antidotes. We might look at emphasizing personal choice, using permission questions, and permission to shift focus. We have about 33 modules, so there are many different specific ideas on how to use motivational interviewing. Uh, throughout the training, you'll look at comprehension, at least three video examples per each topic. So we have their 33 times three, that's a lot of short videos, uh, two to three minutes each, and we go through and do coaching throughout the video so we can stop and look at what are the specific skills we're trying to implement. Uh, notice we also look at bad practice or what not to do. There'll be quizzes, ideas about how to practice MI, and then our materials will be eligible for CEUs. Who am I? So I'm Brad Lundahl. PhD in clinical psychology. I'm a tenured professor at the University of Utah in the College of Social Work. I also own a business, so I don't just talk about the theory of MI, but also about its practice. I'm a mint trainer. I've done a lot with MI, research, practice, supervise MI, train on MI, and I'm trying to enhance MI as I use it in my other practice, my practice and training to it. A little more about me, kind of name dropping here, shamelessly. <laughs> okay, there's me and Bill Miller. Had a good fortune of listening to him and learning from his deep wisdom on MI. Also, Steve Rolnick, uh, we've published together and presented together, so I've been fortunate to have had some great experiences with MI. Hey, it's a little bit more than five minutes. Sorry about that. But we hope that you can learn more about MI and apply it to your practice. Thank you.